Okay, uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, right, before I go ahead, uh, just want to ask, is everyone tracking along? Do you have any questions? Anyone would like to share their thoughts? No, I've been speaking a lot. Anyone would like to, do you have any questions or you'd like to share your thoughts? Uh, Everyone okay? You're able to track along, you're able to follow? Just give me a thumbs up to What about the others? Everyone okay? Please let me know if I'm going too fast. Or if you have any questions, just feel free to stop me, right? Okay, shall we continue then? Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go. Uh, we, we just started with the fourth uh, point, which is methods. And uh, we saw the Lord Jesus doing many, many miracles. Uh, in, in one place, he says, uh, uh, you know, he, he sat, he taught, and he displayed the power of God. I forget which verse is that. He taught, he sat with them, he taught them. And he, what he taught, he put it into action. Right? Basically, he practiced what he preached. Right, so that's that's very important as well. Right, uh, now imagine as people of God, we are ministering to people, uh, and we say, you know what, God can do this, do this, do this in your life. But if we don't believe it ourselves, if we are doubtful ourselves. Uh, you know, it's very unlikely that the other person is going to, you know, be convinced. I'm not saying that every time we pray, we may receive healing. That's what we must expect. But there will be times we, you know, people may not receive healing or uh, there may still be an oppression, uh, whatever it is. But we must be convinced that the Lord Jesus has said, when you go lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. Now, the healing part is done by him, but we must be convinced, right? Because I remember there's this one person that uh, he's a pastor, and uh, uh, we got to talk, and we spent some, you know, a couple of days just talking, being with each other, talking about the ministry. Uh, this was many years back, and he mentioned this. He said, "Every time I pray for people who are sick." they have really not received healing or you know it's just been the same and they have questioned his you know ability or integrity as a pastor so he was very sad about it right uh, and what he realized was many people from his ministry or the church uh, were going to these uh, you know healing crusades or healing evangelists and they would be part of those other churches and eventually a lot of members from his church left Right, and uh, it's very sad, right? Uh, especially as pastors, if we feel, if we see people move out, and if, and if it's they move out because they're not receiving healing or because they are not, you know, uh, they're praying for something and the pastor's not able to pray and bring healing, it's very, very painful. But right? we may go up to God and say, God, you know, you brought them, now see, you didn't heal them, now they've gone back. Uh, remember, as believers, not only pastors, but all of us as believers, that that's why we started this course, right? We started every time we say, remember your identity in Christ, right? Your identity in Christ is not pastor. That's your calling, right? Your identity in Christ is not evangelist. That's a calling. The Lord Jesus, his identity was not the fivefold ministry, all five of them. No. His identity was he was the Son of God. Right? And so when we do ministry out of that you know, understanding, everything will change. Now we must pursue, right? Now, if for example, 
or we have parent ministry, we must pursue God. Say, God, no, let there be healings, let there be miracles, let there be uh, the gifts of the Spirit, prophecies, word of knowledge. Right? We must pursue it. And, uh, and we must continue to pursue it. And something that I personally am, you know, just pursuing every day is to flow in the prophetic and uh, to flow in the uh, gift of word of knowledge. And especially as evangelists, I've seen that word of knowledge is really helpful and it's a beautiful gift. You know, they'll say, hey, how did you know? How did you know I'm going through this problem? And uh, you know, it just opens doors to, you know, bring out the message of Christ. But these are things that we use these are extra tools but that should not become our identity you know only if there's prophecy i can minister to people if there's no prophecy then uh, i'll just keep quiet or only if there's you know healing i'll if i'm sure that this person receive healing then i will minister now that is a wrong attitude that's why romans uh you know we read, read first romans 1 16 it is the power of god unto salvation that is the gospel, not healing. It doesn't say the miracles is the power of God to, or the testimony, your testimony is the power of God unto salvation. Does it say that? No. So the methods or the, the ways in which we minister to people may be different, but the outcome will be signs, wonders, and miracles. We have to pursue it, right? It's not just going to happen overnight, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus himself set himself, right? He went away every morning and he prayed and he asked God, he asked the Father to anoint him. That is why demons came running and fell at his feet. Do you think Jesus would have gone uh, early morning to pray and he said, okay, Father, anyways, I was with you. So, uh, you know, just wherever I go, you just be there with me and uh, maybe spend 50, 10, 15 minutes in prayer and then spend the remaining time you know, just uh, just relaxing by the beach in the Sea of Galilee. No, he would have been intense in his prayer. The Garden of Gethsemane, what was he doing? He was intense in his prayer. Uh, so for us to see results, we have to walk and we have to go through that process right if you're not seeing results one you can change the way you're doing things right and or two you just pursue on if you're doing it the right way you pursue on right um, and in ministry you know we all need to make changes right i remember you know i used to the way i used to read the bible and over the years, I've changed the way to you know the way I read the Bible. Is the Bible the same? Yes. Is the method of reading the Bible the same or the process? No, it's different. I may now I uh, you know there are many tools online which we all can access, but does the same power exist in these words? Yes. I can use the NKJV. I can use the the, you know the uh, American Standard Version, or I can use a commentary. I can use anything, but the power of that word doesn't change. The way I'm studying the Bible doesn't change. Changes, but uh, I hope you're getting what I'm saying, right? The the word does not change, and we see that going through all through in the early church, right? Jesus. You know, uh, the disciples went about, they went everywhere. Now we have an account of Apostle Paul, Peter, and all the things that happened. But the other disciples went out, they, you know, to the Corinth, to the church in Corinth. He says, uh, the, the gifts of the Spirit were manifesting, every gift was manifesting. So I'm sure there were healings and miracles. I'm sure there were prophetic words and words of knowledge, words of wisdom. Uh, it was there. Right, and so as evangelists, right, as people who will evangelize, eventually we will evangelize. Let us remember that when we are empowered, like the method is could be a little different, but the outcome must be signs, miracles, and wonders.
I remember my teacher used to tell me, when somebody is sick, don't point them to the first medicine or to the first clinic or the first hospital. Pray for them. That really struck me. I, uh, I was probably 23 years old, very young. And when he said that, he said, yeah, why am I, you know, why am I accepting things? Why am I, you know, this people are coming and saying this and I'm just telling them, hey, why don't you do this? Well, when I can pray, pray for them, right? And expect God to work miracles. And he's able to do that, right? Uh, we must believe that. And I, I remember there are times, there was this one time, it's happened a couple of months back. I've just been very drained out, very tired, right? Uh, just, uh, just pushing myself. Uh, uh, oh, but I was very tired, and one and this day that I woke up, I had a terrible, terrible headache, just extreme pain. Right? Uh, I I didn't know what to do. I couldn't open. I actually couldn't open my eyes. I was like you know, just closing my eyes because every time I open, it would pain. And I I started, you know, taking these tablets, and I, uh, you know, I started, I prayed, Lord, please heal me, Lord, please heal me. You know, nothing's happening. Thought it'll go in a couple of hours, but the whole day, I, you know, I was in that pain. I didn't sleep the whole night. It was just so painful. I woke up in the morning, just, you know, that very weird feeling, and the headache was even worse because I didn't sleep. And I remember just sitting, and I said. God, why is this happening? And I felt the Holy Spirit tell me something. Do you have authority? I said, yes, of course I have authority. It was like, you know, the Holy Spirit was asking me, do you have authority? I said, yes. They're not using it. You have prayed for people who are sick. You have prayed for people who have got healed and, and they've got healed. You have seen miracles in your own eyes, but you, you're not using that authority. And I've sensed the Holy Spirit saying, sit, close the door, and rebuke that spirit of infirmity. Now, I've got headache, it's paining. I said, God, I don't have strength to rebuke and all. Can you do it for me? But I had to go through it. Right? I, I, I remember just closing the door. I said, I took authority over that oppression, that infirmity. I said, God, I command this pain to get out of me in the name of Jesus. They just take authority, spirit of oppression. Right? And all of a sudden, there was this dunamis power, right? Uh, a dunamis power, just the empowering of the Holy Spirit just came upon me and I knew that the Holy Spirit was there. I opened my eyes, the pain was gone. It was not there, it was just not there. One and a half days, I was sitting with headache. And I realized that, you know, sometimes the enemy is so subtle uh, that he gives us these other options, no? Do this, do that, do this, do that. And then it's the Lord who comes and shakes us and says, hey, do it my way. Uh, do, do the method that I have taught you. Sit, rebuke, and receive. And, and and that's what we all must do. So uh, even in our ministry, right, each one of us, you may be somebody who's just you know, part of a small group or you're working or you're not even in full-time, there's no thing as full-time ministry, but you're not in the ministry as, as per se. But remember the dynamis power uh, you know, that has to be working, that has to be working. We need to use it. Right to be effective evangelists, we have to use it. Right, the Lord Jesus did it, the disciples did it, and we must do it. Right, uh, and how we do it? It's again, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go to the next point. Now, the moment you say evangelist, the first thing that comes to your mind is somebody who keeps traveling. Right. He's never at a place. So Jesus traveled. He went about preaching the gospel from one place to another, though he didn't travel more than 110 odd miles away from his hometown. But he traveled, right? You don't see Jesus saying, okay, let's sit here. Let's be here only. Uh, no, he traveled. Remember, he said, let's go to uh, 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 
I forget that place. Uh, uh, I think it is Judea. Yes, Jerusalem to Judea. And he says, let's go through Samaria. The disciples are angry. He said, no, 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 no. Let's not go through Samaria. Let's go through a different direction. He says, no, we'll go through Samaria. right? And he knew the reason why he was going through Samaria. Probably in the Holy Spirit would have told him, you go through Samaria and I will tell you what you do there. So he obeyed. Right? And he went there. They were tired. We went to the well and the Holy Spirit said, now, now is your chance. Get her. Right? And she, the Lord Jesus ministered to the Samaritan woman. We know the story, right? So he traveled from place to place. Motivation to go from one place to another, from one city to another town. And especially now, in a day and age that we live in, it's so much more convenient to travel, right? Oh, we can just, you, know, you got trains, you got so many modes of transport. You can, we can go, we can travel, we can reach out. But here's the very important point. You must be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, the moment I say, hey, I like to travel, right? I like to go on the train, I like to go on the plane. Uh, and I like to, you know, I like I like it when I go on stage and there are people there and they're watching and, you know, the moment that becomes the center, then we will fail, right? The Lord Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told him, you go here, right? The Holy Spirit led him to the desert also to be tempted. So everywhere, when we travel, when we get opportunities to minister to people, be led by the Holy Spirit. And of course, there'll be times when, like, for example, in APC, we have missions, APC missions. So we get assigned, like, you go to this place, minister to the people. So that's wonderful. You go there, um, you minister to them and come. But the primary uh, responsibility of an evangelist is they move from one place to another. Why do they do that? Is it because they like traveling? No, it is because they want to see many lives touched and transformed. You remember this, uh, Jesus says, uh, a prophet is not honored in his own home. So did Jesus not come back to uh, Nazareth? Of course he did. Did he not minister to the Jews there? He did. And he didn't say, oh, no, I'm not honored there, so I will not go there. He said, I'm not honored right now here, so I'll go to another place. I'll minister. I'll come back. Right? So when, as as evangelists, there will be this, you know, one of the things of, as, a, as an evangelist is it can get really tiresome. Because imagine traveling. Traveling itself is tiring. And after traveling, you're like, oh man, now I have to preach. I have to, I have to spend time with God. Uh, so it's not easy, right? Uh, but now, you know, with the comforts that are available, it's all right. But, but that's something that we must do. Every calling comes with a responsibility. Yes, remember that. Every calling or every gifting comes with a responsibility. If God has called you to be an evangelist or a pastor or a working professional, a homemaker, uh, uh, you know, or a businessman, whatever God has called you to be, whatever that is, there's a responsibility added to it. Now, just because we are pastor doesn't mean we just tell everyone what to do. We come on Sunday speech and go, no, there's so much. There's so much of responsibilities. Right? So we must be willing to you know, uh, take those responsibilities, uh, even as we travel and, and, and we do the thing that God has called us for. Next one is challenges. Let's read Mark chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Mark chapter 6, 5 and 6. Anybody can read. 
Now he could do no mighty work there except that he had that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them and he marveled because of their unbelief then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching yeah thank you rosalind let's also read matthew chapter 13 and 58 matthew 13 and 58 13 Sorry, sorry. Now, he, now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Yep. Now, this is very interesting, right? The Lord Jesus marveled at their unbelief. There are very few instances where Jesus marveled, you know. One is with the man with great faith, Lord Jesus, you don't need to come. I'm a Roman centurion. I have people under me. You just say the word, he will be healed. Jesus was marveled. Right? Marveled, what great faith. Here, he's marveled with the people with no faith at all. Saying these people, how can they be with no faith? So, what is this important thing that we learn here? When we, as ministers of God, are evangelizing and reaching out to people, we will face challenges. We will face oppositions. It is a given fact. Right? Uh, it's sad when we see the church being persecuted, when we see the church being opposed. But that's a reality. That's what Jesus said, right? You, you will be persecuted. The church will be opposed. It is going to happen. And, and and even now, even in this century, you know, with people who are so brilliant and our thinking has changed, we're accepting people. See, people are willing to accept gay and lesbian marriage. They're not willing to accept Christianity. You know, in our nation of India, it's they're not very open. People are not very open, but they're open nowadays. You know, this whole thing of gay and lesbian is being is open, right? But if you say uh, Jesus, it's not open. No, you can't be you can't tell about Jesus. But if you tell people I'm gay, that's oh, that's okay. That's all right. You know, uh, the things that are happening, I, I was just reading the news and you know, a couple of uh, uh, there was a school. There's a school in uh, in our nation. I'll leave the name of the city unnamed. Uh, but what happened was, uh, it was a co-ed school, and during the break, uh, there were boys and girls, and only only boys and only girls, and they were having affairs and they loved each other and all of that, and. Somehow CCTV cameras caught all of that, and uh, you know uh, the principal had called. I'm reading this; it's in the news. Principal had called the parents, and the parents said, "I know. It's okay. We have to accept them how they are." Because the principal was good enough to say, "Okay, you're expelled," but. That's that's what's happening. The, they said, I know. There was no opposition. Right? But in the ministry, there will be challenges. Apostle Paul went through, you know, he puts a whole list there, no? He was bruised. To, uh, you know, I was shipwrecked. I was beaten. I was, uh, these are the things that happened to me. In, and he gives that whole list. And he says, I'm proud of this because I boast in the Lord with all of this. So challenges will come. People will not believe. Say, no, I don't believe this. Right? So don't worry. Even Jesus went through that challenges. Two, there will be demonic encounters. Now, let me explain this. If you are doing the true work of the ministry, 
there will be demonic encounters now when i say demonic encounters doesn't mean okay some possessed man will come and stand and start uh, troubling you no demons can use situations they can use people you know there, there was this one time I, I remember i just became a believer and i wanted to join ministry i wanted to do something in the ministry and every time i would pray i would you know no demonic encounters i could feel that there's something wrong it was like the enemy did not he tried all he can to stop me from going to the ministry I, there was a time when i felt hey i should just go back to what i was doing or there was a time when i felt i'm not anointed enough or i'm not equipped enough uh, now it may sound very natural but it's demonic because when god has a plan and when we go against it it's it's from the devil right there will be demonic encounters even as we travel to places there will be people who are demon possessed now what are we going to do i right? imagine right we're going to a place we're praying for people and demons come in front and stand what will we do one we can tremble and fear and say okay i'll come back tomorrow or two is point one if we are empowered and anointed by the holy spirit this demon will recognize it and this demon will leave you'll not be afraid of the demon the demon will be afraid of you right now i'm not making everyone scared okay uh but it's true there will be demonic activities there are times when i've gone to places uh in andhra pradesh and north india as well where you know oh you're just so filled with the holy spirit you got the whole message ready you know one hour of preaching wonderful and suddenly in between the preaching some person comes and stands in front of you highly possessed what will you do you can't finish preaching you have to deal with that problem you can you can't say okay now let's close in prayer you can't do that you have to deal with it now if we have not spent our time in the secret place the devil will know this fellow i know where to catch him it uh that's why the first point empowering is very important do not go out on your own strength remember what happened to uh, those sons of skiva hey i'll also go and uh, deliver demons in the same method what father uh, in the name of jesus come out so demons replied back i always read that and i think to myself help me not to be one of those the demons reply back and saying hey jesus i know he spent hours in god's presence and he has the anointing of god i know that and demons will you know uh, flee at his name and at his presence paul i know he has spent again hours in ministry and he he he's hours in prayer and he knows the anointing is upon him he's empowered whatever i do to him nothing changes him he's too strong so jesus i know paul i know both have sacrificed who, who are you who are you and the demons overpowered those sons of skiva why because they were not anointed they were not empowered by the holy spirit and i always say this remember last class i said there's a cost to the anointing there's a cost there's a price we must pay if we want to anointing there's a price right we have to go through sacrifice i really appreciate you know those of, who are from africa you woken up probably 3 am or I, i'm not sure what time it is you woken up and you're attending this class there's a cost there's a price right you're not waking up at 10 am just you know okay let me do something okay let me log in no waking up at 3 in the midnight you can be sleeping right now 
and enjoying a good night's sleep, but you woken up, you're attending this class. There's a cost to the anointing. You pray and you ask God, Lord, anoint me, anoint these, you know, my learning, empower me. God is going to do it, right? And these op oppositions, the challenges that come your way, God said He's not going to stop it. You know, remember, the Lord Jesus never said, "I'll stop all your difficulties." No, He says, "I'm there with it. I'm there with you. I'll carry it for you. Cast your burdens on me." And I will carry it, right? So, opposition from religious leaders, opposition from government, from societies, people living around us. You know, we were looking out for a place in Bangalore uh, for our east location. Uh, we were looking out for a venue, and uh, you know, we went to so many commercial halls, and we asked them, you know, we want the place, and. Uh, the moment we said church, they said no. Oh, everywhere. Everywhere we went, the moment we said church, they said no, we won't give it to you. So we were in a dilemma. I said, God, what's happening? And all these are wonderful venues that we can use. It's not like we're asking it for free. We'll follow every guideline, everything that no. Uh, church, no, I don't want. And it was, you know, many days that this went on. Uh, and I, I was praying. I said, God, why is this happening? Why is it that we're not able to find the right place? And I sensed the Holy Spirit tell me, rebuke that spirit of trying to, you know, the enemy is trying to make you feel weak. The enemy is trying to, you know, make you feel that, it's not going to happen because we spent many, many days. We went and saw over 50 odd places. Nothing was happening. Challenges. I said, God, when are we going to do this? You know, there is, there's a church and now there's no place and the members are like, you no, know, just how are we going to do this? And I remember that day, uh, you know, I was just crying and praying. I said, God, it's not because I want church to start so that I can start preaching. And it's not about that, but this is your body. You think, uh, and I was basically complaining to God. I was saying, God, in the whole of Bangalore, you're saying there's no place for your people, for your church. And people, you know, uh, the Bible says that heaven and is your throne room and the earth is your footstool. And you're saying in your footstool, there's no place for who? For your body? And it's really, you know, but I sense the Holy Spirit say, after prayer, it is done. It is finished. The place will get done. Just a sense of relief. Right? The next day we came to office and then, again, we went about searching. But there was peace in my heart. I knew that God is going to give us something. And I knew that it's going to be soon. So eventually what happened was uh, the previous place that we were in, you know, they called us. They said, uh, you know, now, now that we are, you know, it's things have changed. The weather has changed. We could consider starting because we, the, we had booked it till the end of July, so we can start from August, and we'll provide you with the fans, the coolers, and uh, everything just as usual. Then we discussed as a team. Said, yeah, we'll start August first week. So last Sunday was the first Sunday. And it's such a blessing. So when we, you know, when we see these challenges, when we see these things happening, don't walk in unbelief. Don't let the enemy, you know, rattle rattle you up, or sh you know, make you feel that hey, things are not working out. When you go back to God, God will make that, you know, God will make things work out. Right, uh, so you know, let challenges be there. It's good, right? It's good to have oppositions. It's good to have challenges. Why? We're gonna go back to God. We receive more of that, His anointing. You say, God, anoint me. That no matter what the enemy is doing, I am empowered by the Holy Spirit. Right, and right now. 
you know, this morning I woke up just a couple of hours of sleep and I was like, oh God, I want to sleep. It's nice and cold. I want to cover and sleep. Children are sleeping. Can I sleep? I actually went back to my bed. I crawled back to my bed. And I, I, I put my head on the bed. The first thing that came to my mind was, there's a cost to the anointing. There's a price. What if I come against something this day, today and I'm not ready? What if the devil comes all of a sudden and I'm not empowered? I've not received my daily dose of empowering. I crawled out of bed. I said, okay, as you say, just, I don't know. I think it was 3 a.m. or even now if there's a pillow, I'm just going to fall asleep. But there's a cost. We pay the cost. We pay the price. right? And the devil wants to do all he can to bring opposition and bring all these challenges. But as believers, stay strong. right? Don't give in. right? Uh, last point, support. So as an evangelist, what what is uh, what 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 is support? Right? He sent others to reproduce. Let's read Luke chapter nine, verse one and two. Luke chapter nine, verse one and two. Yes, anybody can read. <clears throat> when Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them the power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, so he sent them out to reproduce what he did. Right? He supported them. He said, okay, you go and do what I'm going to, what I have done. Right? Uh, you go, uh, uh, you know, he, he calls, he chooses 70. He makes, divides them into teams of two and he says, go. And they come back and say, oh, Lord Jesus, when we prayed for the people, they were healed. When we, you know, uh, prayed for those who were demon possessed, they were restored. And they were so excited about what, because God himself had commissioned these 70 people. And he told the disciples as well, go, I am commissioning you. Right? And remember one thing, if God is calling you, he will also knows how to provide for you. Right? If God is calling you to be an evangelist, don't worry about how will I buy my bus ticket and train ticket. God will work it out. Right? Now, doesn't mean that we say, okay, I need to be very careful now. Doesn't mean that I say, okay, I quit my job and I say, I want to become evangelist and then sit and pray at home and, uh, and wait for people to transfer money to our account so that we can buy the ticket. That is wrong, right? Wherever possible, whenever possible, we work, right? Uh, the Lord Jesus set an example. The Apostle Paul set an example, right? Uh, why, why am I saying the Lord Jesus set an example? In the book of Mark, it says that, isn't he the carpenter? Isn't he the carpenter? So most probably Jesus was also, you know, working till 30 we know he would have been working right uh, how do we know because he's god and he's the he designed work i'm sure he was not sitting at home and playing with his friend brothers no 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 he would have been working right so there will be times we go through those seasons of you know financial difficulties or material difficulties and during those times remember that if god has called you he will make a way to provide for you financially. He will do it, right? And and so you just have we just have to trust God. Now, does it mean that if God does not provide or you know uh, uh, He has not called us? No, not really. But the Bible says, you know, He's true to His word, right? He says, 
who I have called, I will also provide for them. Right? Uh, and so when we look in the book of, uh, in the early church, uh, in the book of Acts, we see that people came and they gave to the church. The rich people gave, they gave land, they gave money, they gave wealth, everything, you know, they gave. Uh, why? Because it was, the church was anointed and it was a true church. They were doing the ministry that God had called them to do. So God met their needs. Right? As I Paul writes, no? The Lord shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Paul is in Corinth. He and Aquila and Priscilla, they are making tents. Paul is probably thinking, when am I going to start a church here? Uh, and at that time, he's receiving gifts from the church in Philippi. They're sending. Uh, sorry, is it Philippi or uh, Thessalonica? I think it was Thessalonica, yes. So they are sending the gifts. Right? The Thessalonian church, they're sending uh, monetary gifts. They're sending clothes and food and money for Paul. Why? Because they knew that, hey, because of Paul, we have been born again. We are seeing the goodness of God in our lives. We are experiencing the Holy Spirit. So we need to bless. God will set people in your lives, right? And or God can just do it through random people, but He can do it. it uh, you know, God can provide in supernatural ways. So these are the points that we learned today. First, be empowered, know your audience. Three, the message is very important, uh, preaching the right message. Four is methods. As an evangelist, you travel around. Uh, and when you travel around, there's going to be challenges uh, and oppositions. And remember that your true support is from God, and God will use people to meet your needs. So we must model ourselves after the life uh, of Jesus, our Lord. And then we got wonderful examples from the Bible as well, like the great apostle Paul and many other uh, apostles. Uh, pray that, you know, that we will be good evangelists, faithful evangelists, evangelizing to people, reaching the gospel. Right. So let's stop here. Any questions? Uh, anybody have any questions? Any thoughts you would like to share? Uh, No questions? Everything's OK? OK. All right, so what we'll do is next week, we'll get into uh, the evangelist in the early church. So let's look at, in the early church, what, what the evangelists would do. And we know that the church in Antioch reproduced many evangelists and prophets and uh, apostles. So uh, the work just increased there. So we can learn more on that next week. Right, so um, I hope, is it interesting? I, are you all learning? I hope it's, you know, I've just been talking so much uh, to us. Uh, everyone, uh, uh, okay. All right, so let's close in prayer. Maybe any one of us can just uh, pray and we'll close. Anybody can pray. Yes, go ahead, Sid. Father, we come to the throne of grace, Lord. Thank you for this day as you have given us, Lord. Lord, whatever we have learned about doing ministry, oh Lord, Lord, protect us and provide us, Lord. The knowledge which Pastor, Pastor Paul has shared with us, Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for the kingdom of expansion and all glory be given to you, oh Lord. Lord, thank you for this day as we are learning about the world, Lord. Lord, thank you for the people from whichever part of the world they are connected, Lord. Protect them and provide them, Lord. And thank you for this day you have given us and the privilege we get in APG Bible School. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sid. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a great week ahead. I'll see you next Thursday. God bless. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.